My name is Rex Bradford. I'm the lead programmer on Empire Earth 2. One of the areas that we chose to innovate was into trying to create a more realistic world. The game ships with three separate climates. Also, there's a full seasonal cycle. The weather looks great, by the way. We have not only the standard particles that you might see falling, but there's a swirling dust fog effect to it as well. It has a, a very nice feel to it. Apart from the eye candy and the fact that it does immerse you in the game, um, it also plays into gameplay as well. One of the challenges we faced in uh, developing a modern RTS game from scratch was to meet two conflicting goals. We wanted to put as much work up front into specking out and designing where we were going. And at the same time, you want to get a prototype up and running as fast as you can. We met that challenge probably like most people do, which is by scratching our heads and working as hard as we could and executing both things in parallel. We put a lot of work into making a flexible game engine, both for ourselves in terms of being able to play with the game design, but also putting a lot of that power into the hands of the players of the game as well. The game allows you to get in close with the camera and micromanage units, or to really back away. So you can play on that level and get really a broader scope of the action, use things like the citizen manager, and the picture-in-picture -picture window to help you manage a large-scale empire. So there's a lot of ways in which we tried to give people control over the overall game experience and then the moment-to-moment -moment experience themselves about how they're applying their strategy to control the action in the game. There are levels of detail across the board from very crisp, good-looking things to graphics that operates faster and looks okay on low-end systems. So shadows, for instance, you can select whether you want actual animated stencil shadows or fall back on blobbier shadows, uh, which are traditional to RTS games. You can turn on or off water reflection, which, which is pure eye candy, but very compelling. Animation, levels of detail, texture, and again, we, we strove throughout to basically make it look good across that broad range. We took advantage of vertex shaders and pixel shaders and all the modern stuff in DirectX 9 to try to make that stuff look as good as possible. One of the challenges we had in this game that was also one of our big opportunities, and I think we pulled it off, was to uh, increase the scope of the action without sacrificing player's control. We developed a picture-in-picture -picture window because it was clear that we needed to afford people the ability to have more than one view on their empire. Another area that plays into the same idea of trying to give players more control over a large empire is the citizen manager. There is both an in-game simple UI method. You can also go to a full screen map in the game, which both gives you a better overview of the entire empire you have, and also has a more detailed version of the citizen manager if you want to even get a slightly better level of control. What we're seeing here is uh, me giving an interview and not paying attention to the fact that I'm being destroyed by a marauding uh, army of horsemen. I play the game both for work and fun. We have a multiplayer game that we play every afternoon that has rotating people in the company playing in it, so everyone in the company plays the game. And then I play single player all the time as well. It's part of the job. You can't make a great game without playing it. Rated T for Teen.